so today on the console wars podcast we have just one subject to go over today sony what the actual fuck Okay, so before we continue on, just real quick, we are doing a console giveaway. It is a Xbox One S, and actually someone finally singed out and go, yeah, we would like this. So my original idea of maybe taking it off, no longer available, because someone did sing out and say, hey, they would like this, and so it's like, great. So, we now have one contestant. <laughs> so, hey, they might be lucky and be the only one who wants that console. But the goal is we're trying to get to 1,020 subscribers, and we are almost to 600. Thank you very much for everyone who has subscribed. If you want um, rules on how to apply for this console, just look down the description below. We'll leave the uh, rules and instructions for that. And like, let's get into this because of all the stories I could have covered the past two weeks, this is the big one. And I'm going to give you a fair warning. I'm going to be shitting all over Sony today. But I want to make something very clear. I do not hate PlayStation. I am not an ex-bot. I would say that I'm kind of a equal parts Sony pony and equal parts Xbox. But the thing is, I love PlayStation. I mean, one of my first consoles was a PS2. Love the hell out of that thing. And the only reason why I don't have it anymore is because I traded it in to get a PS4, which honestly is probably my favorite console of all time. I just had so many great memories with that console. Uh, I just did a video on my PlayStation Vita, and this thing's pretty awesome. Even though a lot of people love, you know, taking a shit on it, I've been having fun with it. Uh, I have a PS5 over there. I have a PlayStation VR1, which I will eventually do a video on. I actually have two upcoming product videos on Sony PlayStation products. One's an antique, one's kind of new. Uh, I kind of let it slip in previous videos what that one was, just in the background. And so, uh, and then, like, I have a PlayStation 3 backwards compatible model, which I'm, I'm like, going through every video I can find, trying to make sure, that, like, I keep that thing running as long as possible, because those do have a tendency of breaking down. And so just establishing that I do have an affinity for PlayStation. And so, I understand some of you going, dude, you're literally giving away an Xbox console. Like, obviously, you know, I like both. Okay? I like both Xbox and PlayStation. I totally crapped on the Xbox One in its early life cycle. It wasn't until later years that it actually became kind of a decent console to get. But, I mean, Xbox has not had a flawless record. Not by a long shot. And I did do a video of how I felt that Xbox might win this generation. And I still kind of stand by that. But with some of the things I'm seeing, it's like we might as well just dive into one of the big things that set off this whole video. And that is 900 PlayStation employees have been laid off. London studio closed. Nidoc, Insomniac, and Gorilla are all effective. Basically, the 900 employees have come across all branches of Sony PlayStation. And it's not just PlayStation, okay? They're not the only ones that got hit. Xbox had a ton of layoffs like a couple weeks ago. EA just had a bunch of layoffs. I mean, you look at all the video game companies, it is just layoff after layoff after layoff. I mean, you gotta love that Bionomics, people. <laughs> you know, 
Grant, these are international companies as well. I can't just entirely pin it on that, but the global economy is kind of based off of America's economy. If America does well, global economy does well. At least that's what I found. This isn't meant to be in, you know, economics video, but I mean, this this article goes on to say that like eight percent of the workforce is gone. Uh, and a lot of these studios are being reduced in size. Fire Sprite, uh, Naughty Dog, and they're trying to like use flowery words to make it sound like, oh, th this is good for the future of the company. Yeah, you can't afford your employees, eh? That's why you're laying them off. And uh, this leads me to what I now believe to be a piece of shit, Jim Ryan. I know Jim Ryan has his defense. I was like, no, he's actually a good CEO. He's actually been a really nice guy for the company. And it's like, n no, no. He's made so many mistakes before his incessant focus on live service gaming because he just desperately wants his Fortnite. I was willing to kind of let that slide, but what he did this week is a new new level of shitty low. Just take a look at this photo, okay? This is Jim Ryan in the middle, and he's with the team at London Studios. And, you know, everyone seems really happy and whatnot, and, you know, he went there, and it's like, oh, hey, let's see what you guys are working on. Okay, yeah, it's really nice. And then a week later, oh, yeah, by the way, none of you guys have jobs anymore. It's like, you had the fucking gall to go to the studio, shake hands, half cake, go, oh yeah, what are you working on? All while knowing, yeah, all these people are going to be jobless in a week. I mean, at least freaking cancel the meet and greet. Good gosh, I cannot wait for this hack to be out of Sony. I, I am so looking forward to when he's no longer CEO. He has been one of the worst CEOs for Sony. I mean, he has almost single-handedly driven the PlayStation brand into the ground. And, like, you're looking at it, it's just... I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, I mean, London Studios is gone. One of the 21 first-party studios, now 20, uh, it, it's just gone. And they were making exclusives. It's not like they were a support studio. I would have understood if they got rid of one of the support studios. No, they got rid of one of the first-party studios that were making exclusives. You know, the thing your console desperately needs? I'll get more in on that in a little bit. But, I mean, like, their last game was, like, Blood and Truth, which was, a, from what I've played, I've only played about half of it, a really solid VR crime action thriller. And... It's like, and what sucks, what really sucks about London Studios is they were forced to start working on a live service game. And it was this like fantasy, you know, sword and sorcery, dragons and whatnot, set in a modern day London. And it's like, okay, the concept's kind of cool. It, it It's not, I, I wasn't going to get it because it was a live service game. I don't get live service games anymore unless there was a single player component. And maybe it would have had it, but basically Sony, they were seeing it's like, oh, you're only working on a live service game? Eh, we're canceling it, and you guys fired. It's like, but we were told to make a live service game by this douchebag right here. And I know people are saying, well, he didn't tell them. That was just the general focus of the entire company. Okay, tell me why Jim Ryan is leaving, and they are canceling all the live service games. It was him. Okay? It was all him. He wanted Fortnite. He wanted Fortnite. I mean, their model to release 12 life service games in a span of three years was so idiotic. It was so stupid. Like, th there are morons that have better business sense than that. That business model was just, let's throw whatever we can at the wall, and hopefully one of them sticks. That is such a terrible business model to run. 
And so, yeah, Lennon Studios is dead. They're gone. And it, it, it absolutely sucks. I mean, Insomniac had layoffs. Obviously, the person in charge of their IT security, that makes a little bit of sense with all the leaks. Guerrilla Games, one of the flagship studios that has been a beacon for Sony, had layoffs. I mean, and of course, no company deserves it more than Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog got hit with layoffs, and uh, yeah, no company deserves it more than Naughty Dog. I know there's this, like, philosophy. It's really sad when a gaming studio gets layoffs, and, you know, like, we really hope these people lay on their feet. Not for Naughty Dog. Yeah, no. I... Anyone who works for Naughty Dog, you could be the nicest person in the world. If you work for Naughty Dog, I, I hope you get laid off. I mean, that, it's that simple. If you're a nice person, leave Naughty Dog. Okay? Do not work for that shithole company. And you may go, well, what's wrong with Naughty Dog? They make some amazing games. They used to make some amazing games. Uh, and there are certain people... This all has to do with 2020, Last of Us Part 2. I am not pissed off at Night Dog because they made a shitty story. Okay? Um, Insomniac, uh, I've been hearing that the story for Spider-Man 2 is pretty shitty. I'm still going to try the next game. Uh, the story for Suicide Squad Killer Justice League. Rocksteady, they made a shitty game. I'm still going to check out the next product. But not Night Dog because what Naughty Dog did... When they went after YouTube content creators and violated their freedom of speech, that was a red line. It's like, no, never again am I buying anything from Nidoc. The closest I got was I did a eight a ten dollar upgrade for Uncharted Four, and I got a movie ticket with with it. And so it's like, okay, I'm getting a free movie ticket with it for the Uncharted film. Fine, I'll do this upgrade. That's the only thing I've spent. On Naughty Dog, since the whole violation of freedom of speech that they did. If you want to know more about that, just YouTube, Naughty Dog, Copyright Strikes, 2020, Last of Us. And there's some incredible, in-depth documentaries that go over all of the evil, insidious shit that they did during that time. And it's just like, yeah, no. I want Naughty Dog to be, die as a company. Like I, I'm not going to ever get one of their games again. And so they are dead to me. They are dead to so many other fans. Um, I did not hear a lot of people cry out no when their live service game was canceled. It's like no one really wanted to play it that I was hearing. There's a couple of people online that was like, oh no. But like actual person-to-person -person interaction, it's like, oh are they working on Last of Us Part 3? I don't really care. No. So, uh, yeah, no. I Just, that company's dead to me. I don't care that Ellie's gay. They announced she was gay back in 2013. No one cared then. Anyone who says the only reason why anyone's pissed off at Night Dog is because Ellie is gay, they are lying to you, or they're an idiot. I mean, and the extent of this damage... We don't even know the extent because, like, there's this article here. Unannounced games from PlayStation Studios have been canceled. Some projects won't be moving forward. How many? We have no idea. Uh, we know that a project that London Studio was working on has been canceled. And, like, another one we found out is canceled. It's not, like, officially confirmed, but it's, like, everyone's just doing, like, the without saying anything, is this supposed Twisted Metal live service game that was being worked on. And if I'm being honest, Twisted Metal was probably like one of the few IPs that you probably could have had a successful live service game on. Like if I was running a company, it's like, look, we have like 12 IPs we want to turn the live service games. One of them is Twisted Metal. I'm, I might have been like, okay, no to all the other 11. Twisted Metal probably might work. And so, yeah. And, like, the TV series 
just came out. So this would be the perfect time to have it ready by season two, which just got greenlit. And it's like, yeah, now, now, yeah, we're canceling Twisted Metal because our studio is in serious trouble and we need to start cutting corners and cutting costs as much as possible. Thank you, Jim Ryan. I really hope their new CEO is someone with a little bit of business sense than just, yeah, uh, Fortnite. And like, this guy started a week or two back when they announced in like an investor meeting, PlayStation 5 is entering the later stages of its life cycle with only 13 console exclusive games. Many of which are VR2 only titles. So if you want to experience the full 13 exclusives, you need to drop the cost of two consoles. 500 for the console, 500 for the headset. In what world is that good business practice? Like, in reality, it's like five or six true exclusive titles on the PS5. Gran Turismo 7, Horizon Forbidden West, and God of War Ragnarok do not count because those were released on the PlayStation 4. And so, like, I was kind of curious, like, what is happening with the now 20 studios? And so I decided to look, and, like... You have Ben Studios. It's alphabetical. I actually like this studio. I thought Days Gone, really solid game. Got a lot of flack because people didn't understand microculture. And had an impressive open world. And they've been working for several years now. It's like any day now, they're going to announce their new IP. And it's supposedly built upon the open world system that was introduced in Days Gone. So, like, this is one of the few games coming from Sony that I'm actually genuinely interested in. But we don't know what it is. Then you have Blue Boy Games. And they were doing a lot of remakes, remasters. They're now doing original IP and, like, some concept art was dropped with the Insomniac leak. It looks like it's going to be some sort of fantasy game. I'm not really excited right now, but I'm not going to say that's crap. At least we're getting a game. But then you have oh, Bungie. Sony was doing this really, really stupid thing. Where while Xbox was buying studios to make games, Sony was buying support studios. And studios that don't make games. And like one of the most ridiculous acquisitions was Bungie. They bought Bungie for billions. And then when people was like, what does this mean? It's like, well, we're not going to have them make exclusives for us. Okay, what are they going to do? And they're going to provide uh, support for us with our live service games. We're going to still let them make multi-platform games, and we're just going to let them do their own thing. It's like, And you blew how much money on this? And they're they're trying they're thankfully doing a 180 on all the life service products. There's only like a handful that are now coming out. And it's just like so that was a waste of money. And then Fire Sprite, apparently this was the studio that was supposedly working on the Twisted Metal game. Uh let me see if I have that right. Yeah, Fire Sprite. They they were supposedly working on a Twisted Metal game. That's been cancelled. Uh, I think there's some rumors that they might be working on a horror game. So, that might be hopeful. But, as it is right now, they just got hit. They, they got one of the games cancelled. And they got a bunch of layoffs at the studio. So, they're still trying to figure out what to do next. Then you have Firewalk Studios. Um... They're making Concord a life service Starfield knockoff. It's like, hey, if you you want to play Starfield but want to be forced to be online all the time, come play our game. Or you can just play Starfield and that plays offline once you do all the updates. And then Guerrilla Games is one of their flagship companies. I mean, 
They had Killzone, and then they came out with Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm currently in the middle of the first game. I've been having fun. Some criticisms, but for the most part, I've been having fun with it. Their second game was a hit. There's rumors that they're going to make a third one. Obviously, I mean, that would make sense to finish out that in a trilogy. But there's also rumors that they're working on a live service Horizon game. It's like, okay. Like, I'm not really excited about that. Really, so far, the only thing I've been truly excited about has been Ben Studio. And I don't even know what genre their game's going to be. And then Haven Studio. This was so exciting when I first heard it because it's like, you guys bought Jade Raymond's studio. Or you bought a studio for Jade Raymond. The woman who helped with creating Assassin's Creed. And you f make her create fair games. Like, seriously, I've not met one person who thought fair games look good. Oh, and it's going to be a live service game. So, all I have to say about that is waste of Jade Raymond's talents. Then you have House Marquee. And they're a bit of a wild card. Because they don't really do sequels. Uh... They, they tend to just do a new IP. It's rare when they do sequels. So that's kind of hopeful. I wasn't really excited about Returnal. But there was nothing particular about Returnal that I w I hated. It was just I didn't like the idea that I couldn't save at any time. And I didn't like the camera perspective. I know. Silly. But when I have a collection this large. I look for any little reason not to get games. So... Uh, I haven't heard anything really exciting about House Marquee. Then you have Insomniac Games. Their entire like next decade has been leaked. And it's all Marvel. Um, I'll check out their next game. But if Sweet Baby Inc. has anything to do with it. Chances are I'm not going to be playing it. And then London Studios just shut down. Media Market Cool. They did Little Big Planet and Dreams. Their next game is going to be some sort of like cutesy platformer thing. Great. I don't think it's going to be a killer app for your PS5. And then the next one's Nidoc. Screw them. Uh, after that, it's Nixus Software, which all they do are console games port to PC. So they're a support studio. Don't care. Polyphony Digital. Uh, they are Gran Turismo. They made Gran Turismo 7, which is a live service game. They're going to support that for the rest of this generation. And then maybe at the end of the generation, you might see a cross-gen of Gran Turismo 8. So, they got nothing really exciting coming soon. San Diego Studios, they do the baseball MLB, the show games. There's rumors they might be working on an Uncharted game, but... Which I hope that's true because I would love an Uncharted game that's not made by Naughty Dog, but it's a way and see prospect with San Diego Studios. This was rumored back in like 2019, so it, it, that rumor's been spreading around for a long time. Then Sam Aka Studio. This is probably the next studio that I'm kind of interested in because Corey Balog is working on a new IP, and there's rumors that it's a sci fi fantasy. And the last game he made was 2018's God of War, which was a solid game. So I'm actually looking forward to seeing what his sci-fi fantasy is. Um, no idea when that's coming out, though. And then, of course, there's rumors that they're working on the next God of War, which would be set in Egypt. Like, that was kind of the thing they were implying. Like, yeah, everyone in the studio likes the idea of having it set in Egypt. So uh, that'll be interesting to see. Then, Savage Game Studios, I actually did a little short on this. It, it's a mobile gaming company. It, it, it's not going to make any exclusives for the PS5. And, like, I know there's people, they're saying, oh, well, I mean, exclusives are becoming a thing in the past, and you don't need exclusive if you have Game Pass or, you know, PlayStation Plus. Th this is true. Th this is absolutely true. But here's the thing. When you still have a dedicated gaming console like the PS5, 
the only way to make it successful is to have, you know, exclusives. And Sony is not doing it. And then Sucker Punch, um, they knocked out of the park with Ghost of Tsushima. I've been playing it. Awesome open world game. I'm not even that big at the Japanese culture, and I've been enjoying that game. Rumors are they're working on a sequel to that, especially since there's a movie coming out, and Sony has these things where they want movies and games to come out like in the same month. And so probably when that movie's ready is when that game will be ready. And then you have Team Asobi. They're going to do some sort of Astro platform or cutesy game. Good for them. And then Falkyrie Entertainment is a support studio. They're supposedly working on a strategy game. So they are actually transitioning into being a game development studio. So that's good. That's... uh desperately needed and then you have xdev which they uh do they were support studio and that that that's it for sony there are 20 studios it used to be 21 now 20 let's see um xdev is not a studio so that's 19 valkyrie's working on a game so i'll, I'll give that to them uh, Savage Game Studios just does mobile, so that's 18. Nixus is support, 17. Bungie is a support, so 16. You have 16 studios. And the problem with having 16 studios is if this was like PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 era, that might be enough. But we're in an era now where each studio needs like five years to make one game. And so this nonsense of only having 13 console exclusives, yeah, that kind of fits. We're probably only going to get maybe six more, seven more, not counting VR before this console's finally put to pasture. That's not good. That's not good, Sony. And like, you know, if I was in charge of Sony, I would have been all over buying Square Enix's Western developers when they were on sale. You would have had Crystal Dynamic, you would have had Edios Montreal, you would have had Tomb Raider and Deus Ex as console exclusive IPs. And you just let it go to Embracer, which are just shutting all those studios down because they can't afford them. And then, like, Sony announced they will not release any new major existing PlayStation franchise titles before April 2025. Now, I already went over this uh, previous Console Wars episode that it doesn't mean they're not going to have any new exclusive titles before April 2025, just none from established franchises. But still, it's like... You'd think if they were so hot up, they would have tried increasing the amount of exclusives coming out. And yet, they're having so many problems, but mere weeks ago, they had articles like this. It sounds like PS5 is handily outselling its new-gen rival in France. Uh, and then you have PS5 is now above PS4 in USA sales, while its next new-gen rival flounders. You have all these... Sony officially confirms PS5 has passed the 50 million unit milestone. It's doing so successfully. Yet, yeah, it's entering its little half stage of its life cycle, and we're kind of ramping things down. We don't think it's going to sell that well this next quarter. It's like, what happened? What happened? I thought you guys were over the moon. I thought this thing was going to outsell the PlayStation 4. And now you're saying, yeah, it's not going to do that well this next quarter. And people just lose the interest. And it's like, gee, maybe because you haven't released a killer app on it yet. Like, the 360, the kill app on that was Gears of War. And then Halo 3. But Gears of War, it's like, you gotta get a 360 to play Gears of War. PlayStation 4. Okay, Horizon Zero Dawn. The new Uncharted game. No Man's Sky at for a time. No Man's Sky is now available everywhere. 
uh, you know, Nintendo Switch, Breath of the Wild. But PlayStation 5 doesn't really have a killer app. Yeah, people like to point out, well, you know, Horizon Forbidden West is so amazing, and God of War Ragnarok is so amazing, and devs are available on PlayStation 4. I mean, I'm glad they were available on the PS4, but Sony, you gotta have something on your new system that's going to make PS4 owners jump ship and buy a PS5 not seen that yet and then they did stupid shit like the playstation portal would be tracked as a console by data firm Ser serana it's like no it's not a console you can't play it by itself this is a console i can play a game on this by itself a playstation portal if i have just a portal and no PS5, guess what? Nothing's playing on that. Therefore, it's not a console. And then there was this video from way back, or one of my console war episodes way back. This article that I kind of thought was bullshit. Now I'm not thinking so much anymore. Sony may stop console production due to financial problems. Gee, they just laid off almost a thousand people this last week. That tells me they're having financial problems. And the insomnia hack did not help. Uh, yeah, it was kind of cool seeing what Samurai's working on for the next decade, but it didn't help them with the hype mirror. Now everyone knows what Samurai's working on, and it's like, okay, when we gain the Phantom trailer, when we gain the Wolverine trailer, when we gain the Ratchet and Clank trailer, and when we gain the X-Men trailer. It's like, you know, the excitement has been killed off with everything coming from Insomniac. And then with PlayStation VR 2, again, I should just leave this out. I think it's going to be the great pull of FIDA with the PlayStation VR 2, because they are just sending that out to Pasture to die. I mean... It is ridiculous how they are handling the PlayStation VR 2. The only thing keeping the VR 2 alive right now are the third-party developers. That's what's keeping them alive right now. Because the last first-party PlayStation game... I think was at launch. It might have been Synapse. But that's it. A lot of people go, well, what about Resident Evil 4? Resident Evil 4 is amazing in VR, but that's a second party development. Yes, in conjunction with Sony, they did pay for it. I'll give them credit there, but they don't have that killer app yet. I, I don't feel like Resident Evil 8 and 4 are quite the killer app that 7 was for the PlayStation VR 1. Those are really amazing experiences, and it's definitely a must-buy on the VR 2. But we need kind of something big, bold, new. And uh, we haven't quite gotten that yet. And with the one-year anniversary, they did like this blog post announcement where they announced a couple of games. Uh, an update for, you know, Arizona Sunshine. Uh, new look. The biggest game announcement was Zombie Army VR, which is, you know, like just... Another type of Arizona Sunshine. We have a lot of zombie games. I'm I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm probably going to get it. Because zombies in VR is pretty fun. But you can only kick a dead horse so many times. Or a dead zombie horse so many times. And one of the big announcements that really excited a lot of people. But it's just... Looking between the lines. It's like, um... This is kind of concerning. Sony is testing PlayStation VR 2 compatibility on PC, aiming for this year. So, on one hand, that's kind of exciting. Because it's like, oh cool, so I'll be able to play all kinds of PC VR games like Half-Life Alex, But you need a beefy PC to do that. It's not like you can play PC VR games on your PS5. 
Okay, unless I completely miss something with the Oracle, and that would be awesome if the PS5 made it so that you could buy PC VR games and play on your system. But no, what this is, is you need to have a beefy PC to be able to use this for PC VR. Which I don't think is such a horrible aspect. It's just people need to check their expectations with this because it's like, yeah, that's really cool. I don't have the money to drop on an expensive gaming PC. So, yeah, that, that's cool that, you know, Rich people can do that, but I, I can't do that. But here's the thing that really concerns me with this, though. This is telling me, look, we're going to make this so it can do PC VR games, and then we're just going to forget about it. And that way, you know, people have access to new games. That That's what this sounds like to me. It sounds to me like Sony's, like, giving up on the PlayStation VR 2. They're going to let it go by the wayside, like the FIDA. And they're doing this PC compatibility thing so that people don't get upset when they stop releasing PlayStation VR 2 games. That's what it sounds like to me. I really hope I'm wrong. I really do. But the PlayStation VR 2 feels like there's a giant FIDA logo just appearing on its white face. And... Like, this headset would be so cool if it had, like, a dedicated trilogy that Sony made. Like, just launch, they had the first chapter come out, partway through, you have the second, and then they end the headset run with the final chapter of a trilogy of some kind that they made from scratch. Kind of really make it a system seller. But, you know, they're not really doing that. And... Something I have noticed to kind of wrap up is the whole industry, like as a whole, is just kind of like dying because you have huge developers like Rocksteady. They come out with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League and their active player levels are the, like, the four digit level. You know, like 5,000 active players. Or actually, at one point, I think it was like 500 active players on Steam, which is abysmal. And so, like, this was a company that people felt like could do no wrong. And they got rid of their original developers. They got in a new crowd that it's like, oh, let's hire Sweet Baby Inc. to do the story. And, uh, gee, shocker that no one likes this game. And you have a game like that come out. Big studio. Renowned. No one is excited about this game. And yet. You have a little. Tiny studio like Aspire. Announced that they were re-releasing Star Wars Battlefront. With a few modifications. And people lose their minds. It's like what? That's coming out? The pre-order charts are off the, the the retro scale. I mean, like, the pre-orders are heating up for the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. And it's literally, like, games that are almost tw 20 years old. And people are more excited about those than a new Rocksteady game. And you're just seeing more and more remakes coming out. People got super excited for Resident Evil 4 Remake. But, you know, no one was really excited for the Callisto Protocol. And I'll acknowledge that game had issues. But I enjoyed it. But, like, you're not seeing the excitement for new games anymore. People are getting excited for older games, especially since they don't keep games up to date. Like, there was a report out there that said, like, 80% of old games are not available for sale anywhere, which is mind-blowing. But, I mean, yeah, like, originally, the only way to play Star Wars Battlefront was on Xbox. Because they had backwards compatible, and they were offering digital versions of that on their marketplace. 
and now it's becoming available on the Switch and PlayStation. And, I mean, that's awesome. Amazing games. And I love that they're doing updates where they're bringing, like, one map over to the original game, and they're bringing, like, the five missing maps from the original game over to the second one. And it's like, that is so cool. But I shouldn't be this excited for a 20-year-old game. I should be excited for the new stuff. And yet, I'm not. And so... I really don't want Sony to end. I I like Sony. I hope they do better. And maybe with the new CEO, they will. What they did to Lion Studios was complete chicken shit. And so, I mean... I still stand by my thought process that Xbox is going to win this generation. Xbox has multiple exclusives coming exclusively for their hardware. Sony doesn't. Xbox still has so many exclusives on the way. On the way. Xbox still has so many exclusives. On the way. Perfect Doc. Gears of War. There's supposedly a new Halo being worked on. You have Hellblade. You have Microsoft Flight Simulator. You have all these companies that they haven't even begun to start having work on exclusives. Supposedly there's a new Doom game. Uh, supposedly there's a new Dishonored game that at least at one point was being worked on. There's fable i mean they have so many exclusives coming and microsoft started working on this back in 2018 sony didn't didn't prep for this and so it's really unfortunate i hope sony you know survives i think they will but this was a bad week for sony and they need to get their acting gear and they need to start if they want this console to sell better, they need to get their acting gear, and they need to start getting some exclusives out for this thing. System selling exclusives. Killer apps. We'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, that's been this week's episode of the Console Wars Podcast. My name is Christopher O'Connell with 11 Hour Views, and that will be all for today.